as a sensei, a disciple must select viable candidates through careful testing to see if they have the dedication to succeed in the Akohusa style while also looking for those with at least some fundamental understanding of true speech. The first students trained become instructors and administrators, teaching new students and managing the monastery's resources. Three centuries ago, Akohusa, a monk and student of Swakan's teachings, was dissatisfied with the path of war advanced by the Feast of Swaka. Akohusa believed there was another way to master self-discipline. He traveled to different schools all over the land, studying with the tattooed monks, drunken masters, void disciples, and dozens of other schools, but each left him dissatisfied. So he wandered further, listening to the words in the wind and the pulse in the earth, following the flow of the clouds until he came upon a shrine deep within a rainforest. There, he found an old man living alone who did nothing except stare at a single room carved in the wall. The man did not speak, but he did not rebuff Akahusa's help either. The two men lived in silence, the elder studied the sigil, the younger studied the elder. Weeks turned to months and months turned to years, and still the old man never spoke. Finally, Akahusa, in his perplexity, made ready to leave, gathering what supplies he had, thinking his time was wasted. As he turned to go through the shrine's gate, there stood the old man, though how he came to be there, Akahusa could not say. Bowing deeply to the elder, the wanderer tried to move past him, but the elder, faster than seemed possible, intercepted him. Two more attempts and the master blocked him. Then the old man spoke a single word and everything bent around them, as if the world folded in on itself. Akohusa knew then he had found what he sought. Thirty years later, Akahusa returned to his homeland and founded the Order of the Word. As his followers built the school around him, he penned the essential principles of the art, writing just one character each day. When the school was complete, so was Akahusa's writing, and with the final character written he died. Over the next 200 years, the Order of the Word grew around the teachings set out in the sacred scroll, and the knowledge contained inside resulted in the first disciples of the Word. The modern Order of the Word retains the original structure first set out by Akahusa all those years ago. At a monastery, a master guides his favored pupils who in turn instruct the students. Though many disciples wander the world in search of themselves and their place, many more are content to stay on with their comrades and learn the greater mysteries of their path. No single overarching master governs the order of the world. Rather, several masters care for their particular schools. Since this is a group built on the ideals of peace and self-improvement, it has little room for rivalry or tensions between the schools.